Okay, so I just wanted to show you what a tail pattern looks like, at least the ones that uh, I've used. So the rafter is measured from the ridge. Let me get my pointer out here. The ridge, which would be up here, down to the outside of framing. And this line represents the outside of framing. And then this would sit on the actual double plate. There'd be a double plate and a top plate. So here's your double plate. And there would be the second one. And really, if you really want to be technical, structural uh, sheathing does not need to incorporate the double plate. It just needs to go from the bottom plate to the top plate, which is this single plate. Double plate is only really needed just to tie together walls where they overlap or intersect. So uh, that's how we used to do it. We'd uh, tuck the plywood up under here and then shoot it on. We used to do, uh, down in Texas, we used to raise the walls without sheathing so that uh, you could manage uneven slabs, get the walls plumb, and then sheet them. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, they don't do that. <laughs> they sheet everything. So you better make sure your floors are, are level with no humps or you're going to have issues fighting. So it doesn't matter, it's a technique, works either way. Um, people will fight on that hill, trying to say their way's better, whatever. Whatever works, man, that's, that's the real philosophy. So the, um, the tail is what covers your overhang. So like if this, if that's the outside of the framed wall and then you have sheeting along here, this is the overhang off of the house and the overhang goes to the outside of the subframing over here. So we're gonna use this block a lot. <laughs> and you're gonna you're gonna nail it. There's a couple things to consider. You're gonna be flush. Let's see if I can get this to stay. I really didn't plan this out real well. You're gonna you're gonna be flush like this down here to the outside of this. And then that way your plywood breaks and it's supported. Some people will run this through a table saw, put the roof bevel on it so that then you have full support, which is pretty cool. You may have to use a two by six to get that. Um, up here in the Pacific Northwest, a lot of people just put their fascia on the outside here. It's, it's really cheap up here. They, uh, in Texas, people that use trusses all the time were looked down upon, at not knowing how to frame a roof and cheap builders. But up here, everybody has two by four tails because they use trusses. And then they just nail this painted prime pine on the outside, one inch thick, and eventually rots off. Another thing they do weird here, which I'm, I'm used to now, but on a gable roof, they will bring the uh, gable fascia down and stick it past so you hide the end of the gutter because you're not supposed to see the gutter for some reason up here i don't know bad luck bad juju but anyways so this is an 8 and 12 tail it's a 16 inch overhang so it's 16 inches over to here so that gives you this length and that's you can just put that in the uh, construction master or build calc or whatever you use and uh, i happen to make this one out of pressure treated so it's kind of cool because it'll last <laughs> Um, but one of the, one of the important things is I put a notch right there directly in line with the plumb line. And the reason for that is I'm not, uh, bold enough to mass cut a whole bunch like Tim Euler when he, uh, lines a bunch of rafters up and uses his Prezi chainsaw. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but, no, I do each one by one by one. And uh, so I'll pull a tape. I know what this, this is the outside of framing. So I've calculated what this diagonal is. And uh, I will stack a whole bunch of rafters up on their inch and a half edge. I will flush the end at the one end where the top of the ridge would be using a straight edge, like a, a big level or something that's going to make them all straight. I'll hook it. I'll hook on the close end and I'll hook on the far end. So I'm covering about 12 or 14 rafters. Pull the tape, make a mark at the bottom, make a mark cross, 
and uh, I'll confirm it with a framing square and draw a line across the spine of all the rafters. And then as I tip one forward so that I can cut it, all I have to do is cut all the far ends by the ridge exactly from the tip down at this angle. And then find that mark that I drew across their spines, slide this up or down until it lines up and then trace this pattern out like this. If you're using two by eights, then you would probably want to trace this bottom edge. But if you're using two by sixes, this, this is perfect. And uh, that's it. Trace it and then cut it. And a lot of times I'll cut with the tail going this direction just because I'm right-handed and I'm able to get in here and do all this work. A lot more cutting on this end than just one cut at the other end. So there you go. That's a, a quick tailgate talk. And uh, I guess I'll try to catch some more goodness at some point. Really what I need though is a picture of this. I need an actual static picture, so. All right, thanks for watching.